welcome back to us. Today we are in Suwon with our good friend Cord over here. Our favorite historian. Our favorite hi history person. And we're going to go to the Wasong Temple. Yep. Well, there's, uh, you can't really see anything over there, but there's a slow pan around for you. Some background. We, we're going to take the, the trolley. The trolley tour. There you go. Yep. This we is a different part before. of Suwon from where we were last time, different part of the castle. So we're going to try and find the trolley and do that. Yeah. So here we go. Here we go. All right. So we've made it up to the top of the parking lot and we get a little better scenery out here. Here's, I think this is an archery course. Yeah, there's a little sign over there that says Korean archery where you get to shoot at the targets. There's up on the hill if we can see it. Like a little tower or something. Go over this way a bit. And then you got the lovely place where you buy your tickets. Is there any history to go with the ticket buying? Uh, no, not with the ticket buying. <laughs> <laughs> I did look up a couple of things though. Uh, this this temple was or this fortress actually was built in 1794 through 1796 so to put this in perspective they're building this place at about the same time that the uh, French Revolution is in high gear and everybody's getting their heads lopped off with guillotines and the United States is barely a new country and they've just now started to get into the quasi war with the French so put everything into a little bit of a weird historical perspective this actually is a UNESCO site so it's always kind of important and what is UNESCO? UNESCO is the United Nations, United Nations Education, Science, Scientific and Cultural Organization. So it's considered important enough that it should be preserved for all to, to see. So we're being cultural today. Yes. Exactly. Can red, wait, can rednecks have culture? Are sure. We, cultured? we are cultured rednecks. There you go. So that's hold that is. I don't know what that is. So for anybody that cares, is the trolley which appears to be pulled by a PT cruiser hearse. We will get back when the uh, tram's ready to go. All right, so we're getting started here. Might be a little bouncy, but there are, if you can see them, uh, headphone jacks and buttons for different languages. <laughs> Here's some flowers. There's the courtyard where we ended up last time. All right guys, we're pretty much back where we started and now we're gonna walk a little bit so we can actually see stuff because the tour don't stop. type individuals over on the other side of where we're at there would be where the, uh, the uh, smoke chimneys would be set and if the invaders were coming in they would light so many of them so you know, normally you might only have one but if, if you know, the equivalent of invaders are coming in they light all five of them as a signal to everybody else so it'd be kind of like ah the orcs or the orcs something along right. that line there you go so, See, it's not just history, it's Lord of the Rings. Good Lord, how can we go wrong? <laughs> so, no. so you notice that this one angles down. So this way, if you've got somebody firing, they can shoot at anybody trying to get up against the wall or they can pour something down. This one, observation going out. And then these are angled in. So you can either go there or there for shooting. The bow and arrow so you can hit somebody below so the idea is that as with a lot of castles it's always about defense so oh. cord was just telling us sorry <laughs> so the idea is that this would be so somewhat of a secret entrance there's so, a really deep staircase right here yeah so the idea is that main protections 
would be everywhere and they could watch who's trying to come in this way. And you could get in and go out or you might send couriers out this way as well. And it's also a really deep thing they got to come in. So if they're the bad guys, they got an uphill fight. Yeah. Here we are walking up the hill. Okay. <laughs> so as we walk along, there are these flags. And what did you say? It was different zones? Yeah. Different yeah. zones of the wall have different color flags. Yep. Blue here, black down at the bottom towards the front gate, white towards the far, far gate. Those are the ones that we've seen. And then there should be uh, red and yellow. So. And you said they were two things. One was different zones on the wall and the other one was like different uh, precepts of military philosophy. philosophy or something. Yeah. What they were, we don't know because <laughs> we can't read the flags. There's some more Suan for you. And more walking. So this is the most important guard pavilion because it's relatively high ground. Northeastern guard pavilion. In case anybody was wondering, we totally have the high ground right now. So clearly, if you can see what I'm looking at here, ancient Korea did not believe in OSHA standards. In OSHA standards? Look at that, no handrail, no no guard stripping on the ground, it's terrible, we're all gonna die. Another one of the guard forts overlooking the lake. So we've made it to the actual water gate here, just not the Nixon one. And it goes into a nice little stream that runs right down through the middle of town. Alright guys. We got a nice little signpost here to give you distances to major cities. If you've ever seen MASH, it's kind of the same thing. Just a lot more, a lot more places listed. So there's that courtyard from the Summer Palace again. And you can see way up on the hill there's a little little thing up there I don't know what it does but it's up it's, there yeah that one's that one's an observation deck basically there's there's an observatory behind it that we can't see from like, and then that little awning right there that's a giant bell huh that one a foot bell right there on the ground and then they've got the other one up on the hill so. Time to pitch for our friends at South of Seoul again a little bit. Well, Melissa has looked up a coffee house. So we're gonna get us some coffee and relax because it's hot out. <laughs> so we got a mango smoothie and caramel macchiato. there's a caramel macchiato and there's a black tea latte. So how was your, what was it, cherry yogurt smoothie? Cherry yogurt smoothie, it's cherry-licious. Mm. It's actually really good. I got the black tea latte, which it's very similar to a milk tea latte. It's just got a bit more bite to it. And I'm liking that as well. And Cord loved his so much he had to run outside and scream his head off. First floor has air conditioning. Second door floor has a balcony. Coffee's pretty good. I didn't get any presents. I didn't get a present. Did you get a present, Cord? Um, knowledge. Ah. Knowledge of coffee. Yeah. But that being said, <laughs> this is a pretty nice view for a coffee <laughs> shop. <laughs> and it was pretty good smoothie. Yeah. All right. Headed back to the car now. So here we are back over by our parking lot. We've managed to walk back and- so Archery is going on. Looks like they've got people over there doing the archery on the course. And that's a coffee shop and you can also get souvenirs in Yeah, there. they got coffee shop and souvenirs up there. Honestly, that looks like it would be kind of fun but those targets seem kind of close for that. <laughs> Cordis, do you think you could hit that target? Um, that one probably, the one, if you look at the end of the range. Yeah, the one at the end of the range is a bit gonna much. A, that's going to be a hike. <laughs> look, that puppy, yeah. From where they're standing, it looks like those those targets are only like 20 or 30 meters away. Okay. That's, probably, that's probably for people like me who don't know what they're doing. <laughs> it's been a while since I've shot a bow and arrow anyway, so yeah. I probably make myself look stupid anyway. That's okay. I think we're mostly done anyway. 
Yep. That and the camera's almost out of battery, so. That's enough to make us have to go.